All right, today we're going to try to get this speed sensor changed on this 2001 Dyna Wide Glide without taking the starter off, hopefully. And I think first probably need to remove the battery box to get a little better access. So we're going to start with that. That's pretty straightforward. So I'm going to get that removed and I'll get back to you. All right, got the battery box out. Next thing you want to do is remove this rubber piece. Just pull it out the back, slide it down the wires. And then this is right in the middle. I'll stick it in there so you can see. Just get some needle nose and pull that out. And there's a plastic tab on each pin down at the bottom. You can take a little small screwdriver and pull that back so you can pull the wires out. I've got that one already. So, let's see. And just like that. Now what you want to do is slide this off. Oh, and make sure that you take a picture of the way these wires are in that plug so you know how to put them back. That's the major part, I forgot to say. Now what you're going to do is get you a piece of wire and tape it to this. Well, if I can get my tape loose. Make sure you tape it kind of tight in case it is a tight fit through there. I don't know how tight it's going to be because this is my first time doing it too. But I did not see taking a starter out just to change this. Kind of made no sense to me. All right. <coughs> Next, we're going to remove the speed sensor, which is right there wanted to wait till last so I ain't knocking stuff down and then I'll cover that hole up to make sure no debris gets in it or anything so I'm gonna loosen that loosen that bolt which is the island head and pull that out and then I'll get back to you all right so we got the bolt out so now just want to get a screwdriver right in there and lightly pry this up from both sides there's an o-ring that holds it in there like so I sure don't leave much room to get your hands in there all right now I'm gonna do is get a clean rag, make sure there's nothing around that hole. Get something in there, and now hopefully we can just pull this through here, and it'll just come through. Hopefully, <laughs> don't know. Right now it's done bound up on something. Hopefully there ain't no tie wrap right there. Nope. All right. So 
So now we got this out. I said I've never done one of these before and I tried to find videos and there was a lot of people wanting to pull the starter and all that and I just do not see having to do all that and so I came up with this way okay that's the old one out now what you're gonna do with your new one is the same thing Pull this little cap out. And like I said, make sure you take a picture of how these wires are in this connector so you know how to put them back in it. Which I'm probably going to use the old connector because it, I was just looking, let me see what I'll just do with it. It's got that little clip where it clips onto a pin in there to keep it stable. So probably just going to use this one. But the same deal. I don't know if you can see in there. But there's just a little plastic clip. And you just fold it back and the wires come out. Just like that. pull it back and they come out and now same deal slide this off and reverse the process take these back onto this And hopefully pull it right back through. Hopefully. And take your time because if you pull this loose, then it's a whole different ballpark. I never like breaking tape like that. Alright, so now I'm gonna get my wire and I'm just gonna feed it back through and see what happens. And hopefully it just comes up through here. And it did. Alright. So next you want to clean your new speed sensor off, put a little bit of oil on that o-ring and put it back in the hole. And put your screw back in. I'm probably going to put a little bit of blue Loctite on it just to be safe. And then just snug it up. I've tried to look up a torque spec and I haven't found one, but I could pretty much tell from when I loosened it how tight it was. So I was thinking probably 14 foot pounds but anyway I'm gonna put that in and put the bolt back on it and then I'll get back with you on putting the clip back the pins back in the clip all right so now you want to put your rubber boot back on and just refer back to the picture you took of it to make sure you know how the pins were sitting and slide them in accordingly I just took a picture with my phone with it like that Look from the inside to know I was holding it in that position and then took a picture of the wires because I'm going to be using the factory plug instead of the one that came with it.
because this one will clip back on better than that little clip does. And so you slide these back on. Then slide this down the wire. And then get your plug. And look how you had it setting. Which, I need to look at my old one. So that was that. So just like so. So I want to make sure I got this right. You definitely don't want them in the wrong place. So, my bike would have been at the bottom, so, yeah, I got to, I got to move this because that ain't right. I need to switch these two. them in there temporary this time and look at my plug again and make sure so that's going to be looking straight up at it That's the way it's got to be. Yeah, just take your time and make sure you got the wires the way they need to be because you don't want them in there wrong. And then basically, try to get them all lined back up. Where you can pop them into place. Make sure they all click in. You can push on them with your finger and make sure that they're locked in place. Slide your rubber boot back in. And this is how I had the plug when I was looking at it. So Make sure they're all right. Like I say, take your time. Just make sure you got them all in there right. And it's basically, uh, once you clip them back in, put your, that green pin, stick that back in the hole, plug it back in, and you're done. Hope this helps. Thanks.